Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kentucky Small Business Development Center's weekly webinar. We're glad you're here. As we allow attendees a few moments to join our event, we're going to share some information about the Kentucky SBDC. As a statewide nationally accredited program that provides entrepreneurial and business development services, the Kentucky SBDC plays a vital role in the Commonwealth's economic development by assisting entrepreneurs at every stage of their business life cycle. For almost 40 years, Kentucky SBDC has assisted emerging and growing businesses by providing the professional expertise, tools, and information necessary to make sound business decisions in a complex and ever-changing marketplace. We do this at no cost to our clients, thanks to the U.S. Small Business Administration, who co-sponsors our program, and is then administered by the University of Kentucky, who partners with regional universities, colleges, and local economic development agencies. We're part of a national network, America's SDDC, with over 1,000 centers across the nation. To learn more about us, visit kybizhelp.com. There you'll find additional resources to help start, fund, and grow your business. To request personal assistance, email info at kybizhelp.com or call 1-888-475-7232. A recording of today's webinar will be emailed to you later this afternoon, so if you need to step away for any reason, you'll have access to the entire recording. So if you look to the right of the screen, you'll find the chat feature. Uh, if you have any questions for our presenter, you can uh, post them here and we'll answer them actually throughout the presentation today. And if you want to go ahead and check that out, tell us where you're joining us from today. I'm Janet Flaw. I'm with the Louisville Center, which is one of 13 centers throughout the Commonwealth. And with me today, our colleagues from the Louisville Center, Dave Etkin, our Center Director, and Tony Sears, our Assistant Center Director. Good Wednesday afternoon, folks, and happy fall. Hey, hello, Janet. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Happy fall to you as well. Thank yeah. you. Favorite well, time of year. <laughs> it is. It's a great time of year. The weather's finally broken, and it's nice and cool today. Should be a good day. Um, today we have another another great guest joining us today, Carrie Demuth, and um, we've been talking a lot about uh, helping businesses uh, go online and um, boost their sales through um, online sales. As uh, we all struggle with the uh, pandemic and how we're going to do business differently, and we've noticed that um, there's probably about fifty percent of um, businesses that can't easily be found on the internet, can't be Googled quite that easily. And um, there's quite a few uh, Kentucky businesses that aren't even online at all. So in order to kind of combat that, we are uh, we invited Carrie DeMuth from uh, Rev Local to come and speak to us a little bit about uh, claiming your Google uh, listing and so you can be found easier. You know, And Carrie is one of Louisville's top um, and highly recognized marketing executives. She has over 30 years of experience in all kinds of media, and she's currently the a senior uh, digital strategist at Rev Local. She's agreed to uh, help us a little bit today and help you uh, claim your Google listing if you haven't already done so. And um, don't forget, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the chat, and we'll answer them as we go along. And we're hoping that we can um, kind of make this a little bit interactive, and as you as you work through, uh, watch Carrie speak and look at the slides. Try to follow along if you have a uh, split screen, and uh, see if you can't make sure that your uh, Google listing's there. So, Carrie, we want to take it away, and we'll um, get going here. Great, thank you, Dave. Um, so here we go. Everything you need to know about Google My Business. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Um, one of the things that I like to talk about is the importance of consistency and building out the proper foundation online to build that credibility with Google and all the other search engines. So with that, let me jump in here. So as Dave said, I've, um, I'm a native of Louisville, been around for a long time and uh, working in all areas of marketing, advertising, promotion, um, but the digital space is the way of the world today, so I'm quite honored to be uh, a digital marketing consultant for Rev Local. Um, this is my contact information. Um, please think of me as a resource. Rev Local is a resource. Any uh, questions you have about Google, uh, we are a premier level Google partner, and we're also uh, uh, here on a local. We have local representation uh, to help navigate all things Google. So what is Google My Business? 
which we affectionately refer to as GMB, which you'll hear me use that term throughout the presentation. So I'm sure you've seen those TV commercials uh, for the longest time from Google saying, put your business on the map. Well, literally your Google My Business listing puts your business on the map. It's a free online tool businesses use to publish their information into the search results, but it's a whole lot more than that. So what we're gonna do today, if you have not uh, claimed or verified your Google My Business listing yet, it's super easy and you can actually do it while we're going through this presentation. So I highly encourage uh, you to take a look and, uh, uh, and be able to take action as we're going through the presentation. So the, so the first thing that you wanna do is Google yourself. Google the name of your business and if a Google listing appears, um, then you've then there's already a listing out there. So the, again, it's important to either claim your current listing or create one because three and a half billion searches happen daily on Google. Uh, it's kind of the days of the railroad tracks when they when the railroad first came into being, if the railroad tracks didn't come through your town, you pretty much shriveled up and died. And if you're not easily found on Google, it's like your business doesn't exist. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about today is making sure that you're showing up um, appropriately and that you're the, the obvious choice when people are making decisions. So let's talk about the anatomy of search. So when you Google anything, really, uh, the search results that come back are gonna be in three areas. The very top, of course, are gonna be your paid ads, paid search ads, that's considered pay-per-click, where people build advertising budgets and then they get charged only when people click on the ad at the top of search. And then the next section underneath the paid ads is local search. And this is what I wanna focus on today. Um, and then below local search is organic search. So, so let's talk about local search and why it came into being. Well, uh, about 10 years ago, Google made a, ch a major change in creating this big chunk of real estate in search called local search because the majority of searches had a local intent to buy from a local company. And Google is all about serving up what is the most relevant um, decision uh, options for a search. So what's really important, you have to have a Google listing in order to show up in this local search results, the section of the map with the push pins. And since Google created this section, local search, 85% of people make decisions within this section and never go below local search. So traditionally, when the internet first came about in the 90s and people were building websites, uh, you would build out the back end of your website for search engine optimization, SEO, to be found in organic search. So that still has some merit today, but not so much for local based um, decisions because organic search is now below local search. So what I wanna talk to you about today is how to become relevant in local search where people, where the majority of people are making buying decisions. Um, so with that, let's talk about how to create your GMB listing. So a minute ago, I was talking about having you go ahead and Google yourself and see if a Google listing actually exists out there. Sometimes Google actually builds out a listing and then asks people to claim it. And so if there's a listing out there for you, it'll say something like, own this business question mark claim this listing um, so that's if you see claim this listing that means it's unclaimed 
And so the process would be just to click on that claim this listing and start the verification process. If you don't have a Google listing out there, then you want to go to google.com slash business or business.google.com. Either one gets you there. Or you could just Google, Google my business listing. And it's going to take you um, to an area where you can actually start the uh, verification process. So first of all, you have to have a Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account, you got to create one of those first. So everything would be tied to your Gmail account is your um, login access once you get set up with Google My Business. So uh, your listing may already exist, what we talked about. So you have to Google that and see. Um, Google creates those from pulling information all across the Internet. Um, so that's that's what you want to check and see if you're already there and then just go through the claiming process. But if you haven't, um, if you don't have one to claim, then you want to um, create one. So, so for claiming one that's already out there, you have to go through and verify all the business information and Google will prompt you through to fill out that information. But if you need to create one from scratch, then let me just show you this. Um, it will ask, it will ask for that information. Let me just go back your address or service area, business hours, phone number, website, URL, business category, description, photos, and video. You'll go ahead and build it out, but it won't go live until it's actually verified. So, um, in a few more slides, I'm going to get more in detail about building out that business information. But I'd like to pause here and see if there's any questions so far about either claiming an existing listing or going to uh, google.com slash business and starting the verification process where you type in your business name and then you look to see if a listing exists for you out there. Any yeah. questions at this point? Yeah. Yeah, so Carrie, um, Donna wants to know if what to do if someone else has already claimed your their business before them. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, the that happens a lot. We see that a lot. Right. So a couple options. If you know the person who has ownership of your Google listing, they can actually add you as a co-manager, a manager, an editor, similar to um, your business Facebook page, how you can add different page roles you can do that in the Google listing. If you don't know who has ownership of your listing, which we see this happens a lot, where people have maybe used an outside uh, firm to create the Google listing for them and then they never got access to it themselves, which is a really bad practice, um, it will tell you a Gmail account. It'll give you like the first two letters of the Gmail address um, as a hint as to who created that listing. So that, that might be one possibility that you see those, that hint of a Gmail address and you go, oh yeah, I know who that is. And then you can get with them and have them give you um, control of the listing. Or you can go through a reclaiming process to reclaim your business listing. And there's prompts in the google.com backslash business uh, to reclaim and re-verify a Google listing. Any other questions on this slide? Nope, let's go. Okay, okay. So verifying your listing. So this is really important. Once you put that information into that google.com slash business uh, webpage, it will push out a verification. And it could be one of three methods. It's not set in stone which one Google is um, constantly innovating and we're starting to see more uh, phone calls and text methodology for verification, but there's still the old fashioned postcard methodology. And that usually takes three to five business days for you to receive that postcard once the verification has been requested. So once you get the postcard or a text or a computer phone call with a code, <laughs> you have to put the code into that verification page at that 
google.com slash business, and then you'll be verified and then your listing can go live and you have control. Any questions on verification at this point? No? Okay. No. Okay, so the navigation panel. Once you have verified a listing, you're gonna have access to your GMB dashboard. And anyone that has a Gmail account is familiar with, once you've logged into your Gmail account, you go to uh, a google.com page and you'll see up by your picture, your picture will show up in the top right-hand corner and there'll be like a, a grid of nine little dots, three across the top, three across the middle, three across the bottom. So you click on that grid and that's where you can access all of your Google apps. So you've probably created a Google Drive uh, for backup. You probably have your Gmail account in there, a uh, bunch of other things. If you're a G Suite user, access all that. But anyway, once you have a verified GMB listing, then an icon will show up in that grid that is the little um, blue building with the blue on blue striped awning that says business. And that's the app for getting directly to your dashboard to uh, manage your listing. So you can also download the app from the App Store, um, either Google or Apple, Apple Play, whatever, and do it from your mobile phone. Um, or if you're a desktop person or a laptop or a mobile device, a tablet, super easy. So once you're in the dashboard, it's first thing that's going to come up is a home page, a home screen, and it's going to give you an overview of performance review, which is super interesting to pay attention to over time. Uh, if you can see here on this slide in the top right hand corner, um, we're seeing a total number of views, a total number of searches, a total number of activity. And what that's referring to, views are the amount of times that people have seen your listing online versus searches is calculating how many times your listing has come up in different searches. And then the activity is going to track clicks to call, clicks for directions, clicks to website, um, activity on looking at uh, photos or checking, re looking at reviews or looking at what's called a Google post. Um, so what's really interesting, um, uh, there's a recent research that's come out because of COVID the last six months. Um, historically, local listings, the Google listing, the majority of uh, activity has been click for directions, super easy. Um, it allows people to find you, um, navigate to your place of business. However, with COVID, the last six months, the majority of activity has been click to call. So people are contacting businesses to say, hey, are, are these hours correct? Or what's your COVID protocol? Or do you have a, a curb, curbside pickup? Or, you know, all kinds of, of, of crazy things. But it's interesting, um, just as a sidebar, that we've seen that change, that dramatic change in activity um, through this Google listing. So, um, so as we get into building out your Google listing, these performance overview uh, mechanics are metrics are good to know about so that you keep that in mind as you're managing this listing. Um, so what happens is consistent activity on this Google listing helps elevate you in that local search section. So it's always good to check in on your Google listing you know, it's nice to look at it on a weekly basis just to kind of see, see what's happening. Um, and then for the quick links, of course, you know, Google's all about um, making things super easy for you. Across the top, you'll see create a post, add photos, uh, create an ad. Uh, so we'll get a little deeper into creating posts in a minute. Um, but this is on the home page of this dashboard super easy navigation buttons at the top um, for those additions. So any questions on this slide before we go on? 
Let's see. Uh, no, I don't see anything just right now. Okay, cool. All right. So now, this is a, a relatively new addition to the Google listing, the Google Posts. And this is similar to your business Facebook page where you'll, you'll want to, you know, post regularly on your business Facebook page. So um, we recommend posting regularly on your Google listing as well. So at the top, you have some options for the types of posts that you can put out there, add an update, add an event, add an offer, um, what's new, events, offers. So the way this works, um, this post will be live on the front of your Google listing for seven days and then it archives into that updates tab. However, if you schedule your post as an event and your event may be 30 days away and you put the end date on the event post, that post will stay live on the front of the, of the Google listing for longer than seven days uh, because it has a specific end date uh, when you set up the ad event post. So some things to think about when you're making use of this Google post, there's always a call to action button option like this one that we're seeing here has a learn more. And so that link is going to go to our social media uh, blog for these are the top social media do's and don'ts to follow. And it clicks through to our blog on our website. So you can think of this as a, a, another opportunity to get people to click through directly to a section of your website that you want to promote. Um, if you have a new product launch, this is a great addition in all of your um, social media that you're, you're doing for product launches or events. You can add uh, a video here. Um, this is something that we recommend that consistent engagement uh, at least one Google post a month. You might want to consider uh, a Google post a week, just one a week uh, would be highly effective in helping elevate you in local search, showing that consistent engagement with your Google listing. So driving traffic, again, there's options for your call to action button and uh, truly taking advantage of that uh, getting people, guiding them through to where you want them to end up, um, especially if you're having any kind of special offer or discount. Um, this is a great way to promote that. Any questions on Google posts? Um, is there, um, so Barbara wants to know, uh, can she schedule the post? No, unfortunately at this point, it's, it's, there's not a scheduling feature. So you, just make a schedule on your calendar. Today is my day. I put a Google <laughs> post out there. Yeah. Like nothing uh, but, like uh, click it and forget it, right? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, but that doesn't say that they might not come up with a scheduling feature um, in the horizon. I haven't heard anything in the works, but you never know. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's interesting about the Google post is that it's also trackable in that um, insights um, part of the dashboard. We'll get into a little deeper in a minute. So you can actually see how many people are clicking on your Google posts. Okay. Um, so Debbie wants to know, she says she runs a nonprofit and how do you see that applying to them? Oh, absolutely. So a Google listing for a nonprofit is a really important thing. And I'm sure that you have different um, events. Uh, well, not in COVID, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, this is a great way to promote events for nonprofits, but also like say you have a new um, uh, president of your board or a new executive director. Uh, this is a great place to feature uh, people, um, spotlight um, employees, uh, that type of thing. But also if you're having any kind of um, fundraising effort, this is a great way to link back to maybe now it's donations online for a specific thing. Um, I was sharing with the SBDC team earlier that I serve on the Falls of the Ohio Foundation Board and we recently put together um, a virtual classroom experience for virtual field trips because schools aren't in session this fall. 
And so we're running a fundraising campaign right now for virtual field trips. And so a Google post promoting, you know, donate to the cause for virtual field trips and then basically click through to the donation page on the website. Super helpful. Okay. Um, so so, so um, and we talked about this earlier, but um, so Johnny wants to know this is still, this is free. There's no cost to, to add. Correct. This Good question. Yes, this is free and I highly encourage you to take advantage of it. Um, so getting into the details of your Google listing on that dashboard on the left hand side will be tabs uh, for different things. The main one is the info tab. And that's what you're seeing depicted here in this slide. So at the very top, um, where you have add or remove categories. So right now you're seeing an example of Rev Local, and there's, let's see, six, seven, there's like seven listings of categories, business categories right there. You really want to think through and add as many categories as Google will allow you to, um, because these are keyword um, designations for when people are searching for any of those types of services in a categorical search you want to make sure that you're relevant in those searches and so uh, you can put uh, i think it's up to 10 maybe uh, categorical searches here and google is constantly innovating and updating the options for categories so you may set up this listing and you have a unique business that you're not really finding the right category for your business but you should always check this on a regular basis. Just go back in and check and see, um, because over time, Google gets smarter and smarter and comes up with you know, the right fit for your business over time. So you can always make changes in this categor categorical uh, search area, but it's really critical to optimize this to its fullest potential so that you're showing up uh, for a variety of um, things that you offer. And then let's talk about the next list. The next portion of this info tab is going to be your actual physical location. So the point of a Google listing is, is two options. You have a bricks and mortar where you want people to come and visit you in person. That's the key to local search. Or you're a service area business that services the local community. So say you're a, um, a trade or a, a solopreneur and you work from home, you don't wanna be publishing your home address on Google. You don't want people to come to your house. You don't want them to know, you don't want that Google car driving around your neighborhood and snapping pictures of your house, and putting it online. Uh, you can hide your physical business address if it's you know your home address in what's called a service area. So now this, this listing here is showing a service area for different cities in Ohio. But what I like to counsel people, because this has changed a little bit over time, um, what you wanna do, you can actually put in up to 20 zip codes in this service area. So think about your territory of where you like to go and do business. Um, if you're you know, going to people's homes for a trade or if you're um, a business to business and you just have a territory that you cover, think about that territory. You can look up um, a zip code map online and pick the zip codes at the farthest north you wanna go, the farthest east you wanna go, the farthest south you wanna go, and the farthest west you wanna go. So like two to three zip codes north, two to three zip codes east, two to three zip codes south, uh, two to three zip codes west, up to 20 zip codes, and then put them all in this service area. So then your Google listing, instead of showing an actual physical address, it's going to show the map with a red outline outlining your service area. And then it'll be like a transparent like pink over that area. So that's a really important step to make sure that you're showing up for the area that you wanna be found for. Um, another um, important note, 
a business listing, say you are bricks and mortar and you want people to come to your place of business. Now here's a question for you. Are there other businesses at that same location? If there are, you don't want to confuse Google. So you need to have a separate suite number or unit number or floor number, something to um, separate you from the other businesses at that same business address. If you don't currently have a suite number, you need to have your United States Postal Service mail carrier create an actual suite number for you with the uh, post office. So then it's a legitimate address. So that's something really important to know because over the years, um, Google has um, chastised businesses for jamming the system with um, PO boxes or uh, having um, a co-working space address, uh, those types of things. Google doesn't like that. So if you're in a facility that has more than one business in it using the same address, you need to officially have the post office segment a suite number for you. Um, any questions so far on this on this slide? Um, so Betty says um, when she signs into her account, she doesn't get the screens you're showing. It says she says her dashboard shows privacy and personalization, account storage, things like that then she must not be on the actual Google My Business dashboard. Yeah. So again, back on your Gmail account where you have those nine dot grid, when you click on the grid, you have to look for the blue building with the blue on blue striped awning that says business. And that's the dashboard that will take you uh, into the Google My Business listing back end. Yeah. Okay. So some other features on this info tab that are really critical. Business hours. How many times have you Googled a business and you saw that they were still open and you drove across town only to find out that they're closed? How annoyed were you? <laughs> so this is a simple update. Um, anytime you're changing your business hours, be sure to change it on your Google listing. Uh, that's really critical. And then you can also, underneath the hours listing, there's a, uh, another listing for additional hours. That's where you can put in holiday hours and you can schedule those in advance. Like you're going to be closed for Labor Day or you're going to be closed for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And you can plug that in so that on those days, your listing will say, you know, closed for the holiday type of thing. Um, let's see. And then there's a selection of attributes. And right now with Black Lives Matters, um, if you're a, a African-American owned business, uh, please take advantage of the new, recently new Google listing for a black owned business. Uh, there's also women led business, veteran led business, um, those types of attributes are, are super helpful. And then last but not least in this information section is the business description that's further down on this, um, this tab underneath hours further down is, is going to be, um, it's called info. And now you can put in up to 750 characters on your business description. So you really want to be thoughtful and intentional about what you write in that business description. So you want to be thorough about the type of offerings that you have. Again, it goes back to validating your business for relevant searches for categories that you want to be found for in that business description. And then back to our favorite re-verification we were talking about before. Um, if, if for some reason you get prompted for re-verification, it could be because you have moved locations. Uh, that's a critical one where it asks for re-verification and you'll have to go through that uh, postcard or phone or text um, re-verification process. And then, of course, 
Google won't show your listing while it's in that re-verification process. And then once it's re-verified, it'll come back live. Any other questions so far? Uh, so Alan asks, um, he's a manufacturer that recently put in e-commerce um, they're not really trying to drive anyone to their physical location. How does mm -hmm. this apply to his business? Yeah. So e-commerce is, is, is a little bit different animal. Um, so the strategy for local search is building that local uh, uh, brand awareness, local visibility. So even though your e-commerce, the question is, do you want to be known in the local area for your business? If that's the case, then yes, you would want a Google listing. If you don't care about having a local presence, then you, you really don't need a, a, a local search, but you do need a paid ads strategy to get you at the top of Google for the types of things that you're selling in, in e-commerce. Specifically, a Google shopping uh, strategy would be super helpful. And that can be nationwide. It could be any territory uh, that you want. If you only sell in a regional basis, like if you have a distribution where you have a territory, um, you can only sell within this territory. Uh, you could structure those Google shopping ads to only show in the areas that you're allowed to sell in. Um, so that's when, when um, strategy is really important. Are you focused on reaching um, a local audience or are you needing a local audience? And sometimes there's a hybrid opportunity for businesses that they want to have a local presence, but they're also going to be selling e-commerce outside of the local presence. So then you'd want to combine local search marketing with a paid ad strategy. And one last thing on this info page where it says enter an appointment URL, uh, Google does promote booking um, systems. And so if you currently are a type of business where you have a booking system like a hair salon or um, gosh, it could be any type of business that uses a, a booking system. This is an opportunity for people to go directly from your Google listing into your, into your booking system. And let's see. Okay, we'll go on to the next slide. So back on insights, on that dashboard, on the left-hand side, there'll be a tab for insights. And it'll start out with giving you a breakout of how people are finding you, a direct search, a discovery search, and a branded search. So this, as you can see in this example, there's a, a, a list after the headline, there's um, a note that says one month and a little carrot for a drop down. So you can check on one month, one week, and one quarter. Um, you can make those changes. And then this big green band is showing Total, well, it's showing a combined number for total searches, but then if you click on each of the colors, it will give you the breakout of what the percentages are of the total searches for each of the categories. So let's talk about that. So a direct search or when people know your business by name and they specifically put your business name into Google, and that's a direct search. Now, a discovery search are people don't know you from Adam and they're just looking for someone to help them with a certain product or service that they're looking for. For instance, you know, um, pizza place near me. I don't know of any, I think I'd like to learn. So that's a discovery search. But then you have this interesting hybrid um, category called branded search. So for instance, say you're um, an, automotive repop and you sell Michelin tires is your big um, thing that you do. And so you've actually put in your uh, listing area that you sell Michelin tires. So that's a brand that you sell. 
So say someone's searching for Michelin tires. So then you showed up in those searches because it was a branded search that you have built out properly in your uh, Google listing, in your website, uh, your online presence. You're all about the Michelin tires. So that's that's a branded search. Um, so searches versus search versus map views um, is, a, is another interesting um, comparison. So in Google, you people can Google search directly in Google, but a lot of times um, on a mobile device, like you're traveling and you have your cell phone and you have the Google Maps app on your cell phone, and you just want to you, you just want to see what's nearby in the Google Maps, and you search through maps. So it's surprising um, the amount of searches happening in actual Google Maps versus Google search. And so there's comparisons in this insights to show you that. And then of course, clicks to website, clicks to directions and clicks to call are gonna be tracked in this insights. Um, and the zip codes over time, as you get more um, searches, as, as more people are finding you through Google, uh, Google will start to map out like a heat map of where in the local area people are engaging with your listing and that's really interesting uh, data to make use of and then of course the phone calls and photo views are all being tracked so a good um, best practices for adding photos and video to your google listing is consistency if you could you know add say a photo a week or you know, a couple of photos a month just to show that engagement, that's super helpful in, um, again, showing engagement to Google that you're um, engaging with the online space. Any questions on insights so far? Nope. Okay. No, we'll keep moving. Okay, cool. So, Reviews, review marketing. So a couple of years ago, Google had a major algorithm update for local search. And a big portion of the local search algorithm is now based on Google reviews. Today's word of mouth advertising is the form of online reviews. And the Google review is the most important. How many do you have? what the average quality score is, and how recent are they. If you haven't had a Google review in six months to a year, uh, Google thinks you may have gone out of business and will not see the importance of serving you up as a relevant choice. So a good uh, review marketing strategy is to get at least one Google review a month to show that consistent engagement with the search engines. And also it's important to respond to every single Google review, good or bad, um, responding really does matter. And so you'll get, uh, it's in your Gmail account, you'll get a notification when you get a Google review. So you can just click on that notification and read the review and uh, write a reply right then and there. So. Um, anytime that there's a questionable review that comes in, you can always flag the review as either inappropriate or doesn't meet Google review policies. Um, if it's just that, hey, you screwed up and people are calling you on the carpet for it, you, you, can't, you can't flag that one. You, you need to make good on the situation. So take a uh, non-emotional diplomatic approach to your reviews. Um, and if, if there's an issue, always, you know, offer to take it offline and rectify the situation. And that, that has a lot of merit for, uh, people that are reading reviews, uh, when they see that a business owner is proactive on fixing mistakes, it endears that business to the consumer and 90% of people trust reviews more so than referrals from friends and family. <laughs> so it's a really important part of today's digital marketing is having a sound review marketing strategy. Any questions on reviews? Um, 
should do um, should uh, businesses uh, actively seek reviews in in part of their marketing and messaging schedule uh, strategy? Absolutely, and and thank you for that question. That's a good one. So in the dashboard on the Google My Business listing. When you first go in there, there'll be a pop-up that will say, hey, share this Google listing. And that actually gives you the link to the Google listing. And it's always good to send that link to your customers. 70% uh, of people will leave you a review if you ask them to and you make it super easy for them to do that. So take advantage of that share your link that pops up on your um, dashboard. Any other questions on review marketing? Um, so Mary wants to know just basically what are the best ways to get the customers to write reviews? Yeah, so you can't incentivize. That's a no-no. Um, best practices are just simply to ask for feedback. You know, thank thank the customer for the business and ask them for their for their feedback and get, provide them that link to the Google review. That's that's really that's really all you can do. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so messaging. This is a relatively new feature in the um, GMB listing. So uh, this is similar to Facebook Messenger. And you know, it's been so fascinating for me with quarantine and COVID and how business is getting done through messaging apps, like messaging on LinkedIn, business to business, or messaging through Alignable, or messaging through Facebook. So Google has gotten into the messaging game. Um, now this is not um, uh, publishing, pu it's not publishing your cell phone number by any means, uh, but you do have to have the messaging app portion tied to a cell phone number. So um, when you do take use of the make use of this messaging um, system, it's it's kind of like a chat feature. So you want to make sure that you're um, replying within 24 hours and that it's just uh, you you really want to use this feature to get people to to either a phone call or an email or something offline so that you don't want to get into heavy duty, getting the weeds on messaging. You just want to cover the, the basics of connecting. Um, does anyone have any questions on messaging? Uh, thanks for that, but um, no. Uh, Debbie just says she had, um, she had uh, no idea that uh, you should answer reviews. So that was a good tip on the last slide there. So Oh, good, good. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard of this messaging function either, so I'm glad you brought this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. The way of the world today. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about photos. So this is a really fun feature that you can do a lot with. Um, and you can also upload videos in the photo section. So at the bottom of that info tab will be upload photos. And there's going to be, when you first do it, there's going to be um, uh, a cover photo and a logo photo that are, that are identified. But then the rest are just, you know, random photos. So really think through your cover photo that you want something that's um, appropriate for your business. And then, of course, a logo photo is, is really key. So um, Google will also uh, pull photos from the Internet that have tagged your business into this photo feed. So if you ever see photos out there that you're not quite happy with that showed up on your um, photo bank, um, you can in the dashboard, you can delete photos. Now, if it's the Google car photo, you can't really delete that. So if, um, if you had uh, previously had your home address as your street listing and didn't do the service area, that Google car is gonna find you and take a picture and put a picture of your house up there. So if that's up there, um, you can put in requests to have that taken down. But the key thing is changing and not publishing your, at your physical home address and then it makes it easier for Google to remove that. Um, 
but uh, but um, the key is again showing pictures of your actual place of business or pictures of what you do or uh, pictures exterior of your building because a lot of times people don't you know they're traveling cross town to come see you they don't really understand exactly where your address is or what your building looks like and so exterior photos are super helpful uh, for people to find you and then um, just some format tips jpeg or png um, uh, 10 megabyte maximum size and then of course the um, resolution needs to be a minimum of 720 by 720 pixels um, so when you do the videos you just want to make them short you, you don't really want like a five minute video on there uh, <laughs> attention spans thanks to TikTok, <laughs> have gotten to be so short um, so you really really want to pay attention to that any questions on photos or videos no. Um, not at the moment. Thank you, though. Okay, cool. All right. So this is fascinating to me. Listings that have photos receive 42% more requests to driving directions. So again, it's making sure that you're looking good online uh, for people to choose to do business with you. So take, go that extra mile. And you don't have to have a professional photographer and take all these pictures. You know, cell phones today are so... Um, advanced um, technology wise they, they take perfectly good photos that you can just simply you know have some photos on your phone use the phone app for your GMB dashboard and just post photos it's super fast super easy okay so some new features in the Google listing um, content list Google will decide based on your category what options you'll have have for additional content on your listing so when you for instance if you're a restaurant and you've used utilize the category listing of restaurant Google on your dashboard will give you the option to put up a menu where you can actually give your entire menu on the Google listing and you can put prices in there too um, uh, say you're not a restaurant but you have specific retail or online shopping products, you can put them in the products tab. Or if you're a service oriented business, you can go deep into um, listing all of your services. Super helpful. This Google listing um, is all about engagement with customers that are looking to do business with you. So the easier you can do, you can make this listing uh, easier for people to do business with you, um, the better off you are in the long run. Any from the content list? Uh, nothing from content, though. Thank you, though. Okay. okay, cool. So, believe it or not, Google actually offers a free website. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. So, when you're in the GMB dashboard, they'll be on that left-hand um, list of, of um, items. There'll be one for website where Google will pull content from your Google listing and actually make a landing page. It's not a real website. That's why we like to refer to it as a temporary website. It's a, um, it's, it's a good solution for people that don't have a website because um, it is mobile optimized. That's important. Um, the reason we call it a temporary solution is because there, there's no build out on the back end for any kind of, um, uh, uh, SEO on the back end whatsoever. There's none of that. It's just basically a landing page with a little bit more information than your Google listing. So it has templates that you can follow and then it will automatically give you a Google URL that's like something, something, something dot business dot Google got some crazy thing. Um, but in today's world, Google has gotten so sophisticated that you really don't have to remember URL addresses. You just Google stuff and stuff comes up. So it doesn't really matter what your URL address is. But Google does offer um, uh, an option where you could pay like $12 a month to utilize a customized URL address. So say you bought a URL from GoDaddy. Uh, you could pay Google 12 bucks and use that one for this um, free website type of thing. Um, 
So you can add additional content um, uh, beyond what, it, what this free website will pull in from your Google listing. And that's what those um, customizable templates have to offer. And it's super easy, plug and play, but it's not very creative. They're, they all look the same. Uh, they're not unique in any matter other than the content that you put on there. Um, so again, it's it's an uh, an opportunity to get into the online space. If you've never had a website, you don't have any kind of online presence. This is definitely foundational and a starting point. Any questions on the Google? Not yet. So okay. Thank you, though. Cool. Okay, so back to who manages your Google listing. In the dashboard, there's a tab called users where you can assign multiple users. Uh, the primary owner is the only person who can assign other users. Okay. So the primary owner will have access to everything. Um, the owner manager and site manager have less and less degrees of accessibility. Um, so, you know, pick your people appropriately. Um, but it is good to keep track of who's managing your Google listing. Um, so let's talk about multiple location businesses. Yes, you really do need a Google listing for each location. Um, but if you're, say you're the marketing person for a multi-location business, you can set up those additional um, Google listings using your same Gmail account. So, in your dashboard, you can manage all of the location Google listings within that one dashboard. When you're a, a multi-location manager of Google listings, when you first click on the dashboard, at the bottom of the home screen, will list all of those locations. And then when you wanna manage the individual location, you have to click on the location that you want to manage that listing and then go and make updates, um, add content, that type of thing. Um, and then you go back to the home screen to do uh, the additional locations. Any questions on access users? No, that was pretty self-explanatory. Okay, cool. Okay, so important tips for managing your listing. Um, effectively communicating with potential customers is huge. So you have to put on your customer hat and think, okay, how, how do these, what do, what do my customers need to know about my business? Uh, so thinking in, in that line. Um, so we talked earlier about how important it is to update for holiday hours or just uh, hours in general with COVID we've seen people constantly changing their business hours, you know, uh, it, it's been kind of crazy. So, so staying on top of that is really important. And then posting on a monthly basis is a minimum, uh, is best practices. And that's again, um, those Google posts, uh, but then also taking a look at least once a month at your dashboard and seeing if there's any new bells and whistles that you need to be taken advantage of. Um, Google's really good about bringing to your attention, you know, new stuff on the dashboard. Um, one of the things that was relatively new this summer was under attributes, being able to add um, dining, curbside pickup and delivery uh, became really important with COVID. So, so constantly look and see what's new in the dashboard is important. And then using your insights to drive strategy. So, we talked about all the different data that you can find in the dashboard. So looking at uh, when and where searches are being made and, and what action when they find you and then what keywords they use to find you. So the, the keyword thing, we didn't really talk about that on the previous insight slide, but on your insights tab, there's going to be a list of the top 10 keywords of how you were found, how people found you, what were the top 10 keywords that people were finding your business. And I, I wanna give you a little example. It's really good to monitor that because if you start seeing random weird keywords that you're being found for, something's not right. And uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I met with a audiologist, a hearing doctor, and uh, 
she was sharing with me her her uh, GMB dashboard and said, Carrie, why is it that these top 10 keywords that I'm being found for are all about coffee, uh, free coffee, coffee bar, great coffee, uh, it was coffee, coffee, coffee. And I said, yeah, I, I, I can tell you why. Uh, <laughs> on her business description, she had glowing um, a discussion about how their lobby is so comfortable and they offer this free coffee bar and they really encourage their patients to feel at home, um, super homey. And then a lot of her reviews were, thank you for the free coffee, love your coffee bar, uh, great coffee, blah, blah, blah. And it was like coffee, 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 coffee. So you, you want to monitor this because Google sees all that and thinks, oh, well, they're really a coffee bar. Well, no, they're an audiologist office. So, so those are some things that um, are super helpful to, to uh, pay attention to. Any questions on this screen? Not so far. No? Okay. Thank you. And then getting into some more tips. So uh, a year or so ago, Google added this feature, the Google question and answer. And this is, again, Google's uh, crowdsourcing uh, mentality, where they encourage random people to leave you a random question out there on your Google listing and expect you to monitor that and uh, respond, because Google also encourages other people to respond for you. These Google guides, uh, people are Google guides out there. Uh, well, you may not like what someone else responds on your behalf. so. Monitoring this is really important. Um, and if there's inappropriate questions or inaccurate answers that are um, showing up through this crowdsourcing, you can flag those. Um, and and uh, you can have multiple people flag them. It's kind of the old adage of uh, uh, more, the, the squeaky, squeaky wheel gets the grease, so to speak. Um, so if you have a situation on a Q&A that isn't right, get all your friends and family and colleagues to flag it. <laughs> so then it'll get, it, it will um, resonate with Google that, hey, that, that wasn't right. Um, but then you, if you see a, a question out there that you really like and you've, you've written a really good answer to it, um, you know, you can like that question and answer and then that, moves it up in the placement in the listing of these Q&As. Um, and you do want to respond within 48 hours for questions that are out there. So I'm sure you've seen Google listings where you've seen uh, where it says six unanswered questions. And you're like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> do I really want to do business with that business? They're not even bothering to answer questions from potential customers. So. So really engage with this section of the Google listing is really important. Um, yeah. And speaking of Q and A's, here's a little tidbit for you. On your website, if you do have a website, it's really good best practices these days to have a special tab for Q and A for frequently asked questions uh, because uh, Google has gotten so sophisticated with more of, uh, we call them long tail keyword searches, where, where people will write a whole sentence with, you know, asking Google for answers for, you know, a, a really long type of uh, engagement. So like, uh, so Google, how do I, how do I uh, fix blah, 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 whatever, it's super long. And then the response will come up and you'll see these little snippets. So Google is searching the internet for answers to questions all the time. And if you've pre-populated your web page with a page for frequently asked questions, there's a good chance that your question and answer will show up in a Google snippet. That's where it looks like a little paragraph of, of content that Google pulls up. That's where it's coming from. So highly encourage you to take advantage of that. Any questions on the Q&A section? No, so no. far. Okay. And then 30% of customers say they're more likely to choose a business that actively re replies to reviews. Again, back on the importance of responding to every single uh, review. Really important. 
And let's see. Oh, so we're coming to the end. Uh, because we're a premier level partner with Google, Rev Local is all about education. And we do a nice weekly blog called Trends in Digital. And I highly encourage you to, um, it's free. Uh, you can go to revlocal.com slash blog and sign up for our blog. And because the digital space is changing all the time, we're on top of all the um, innovations, um, not just with Google, but with uh, Bing and the different social media platforms um, and seeing you know, what's working, what's not working and giving tips and tricks on things that you can do yourself. And if at any time it gets to be too overwhelming, we're here to help you. <laughs> uh, so uh, any further questions? This is my contact information and I'm free uh, at your disposal to give you guidance. And uh, I also mentor with SCORE, which is a sister uh, group for SBDC. And um, we're here to help you grow your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have some questions and um, I have one uh, that I've been thinking about through this whole thing, but I get a lot of robocalls from companies saying that I need to verify my Google business. Um, but I've never answered that. Is that, is that actually Google or is that kind of a scam? That's a scam. Google will not call you. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tony. Yes, David. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. So we have some more questions out there, don't we? We do have a few. Um, Debbie, I don't know if you um, answered this already, Carrie, but Debbie Childress says, is the review of Q&A on the dashboard? So the, so in the dashboard, two, two separate sections, reviews and Q&A. So you can see your reviews in the dashboard and you can see the Q&As in the dashboard. So yes, okay. I guess is the answer. Okay. Um, you, you covered this a little bit earlier, but um, Kendall says that they purchased the business from a retiring couple mm. um, and they did not remove any of their business information online. They kept the same business name, but mm -hmm. didn't assume their LLC. So they're wanting to know if there's a way that they can um, change the company's, the, uh, the seller's name. I mean, seller's information on the Google My Business. Yeah, they're going to need to gain access to that Google listing. And uh, it sounds like possibly the previous owners of the Google listing may not have um, granted them access or even remember their access. That, that happens a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, when you want to change, uh, like you've bought a business and you want to change the name or you want to move it to a new location, more than just Google, there's a whole digital footprint out there of that previous data that will confuse the search engines once you start updating information. And so you're going to need to do that across the whole digital footprint. Um, and that's something that I can give some guidance to. So um, if you want to reach out to me direct, I'm happy to do a deep dive on the current situation and give you some recommendations. Thank you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, one question about photos. If you have a low quality photo and you want to remove it, um, do you use the flag option? The, the what option? It flag? says, do we, oh, uh, no. yes. Yeah, so first thing you want to do, you want to go into the dashboard and you want to go into that info tab and you want to go all the way to the bottom where it says photos. And then you want to click on that and then it'll show you all your photos and you can actually delete from the dashboard photos. Now, only you can only delete the photos that you've put up. So if for some reason there's a photo out there that got pulled in from a Facebook photo or somewhere else on the internet, Google sometimes does that. Well, if, if your business was tagged in a photo, sometimes Google will pull that into that Google listing um, photos, then you would want to um, have some additional assistance to get that one removed. Um, but the photos, you can't really f 
flag the photos the same way you would flag um, an inappropriate question or inappropriate review. It's a little bit different. And we Got can it. help with that. Yeah. So it looks like Kendall may be reaching out to you, Carrie, because she says that the sellers, she says she doesn't think they remember. So she's yeah. probably yeah. going to We, we can help you. with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat, Dave. Um, well, here's here's one uh, from Howard. Okay. He, he asked uh, for an organization that only has a Facebook page. Can that that business still claim a post? Um, so a business Facebook page is really important um, in today's world, and so you should easily build out a Google listing and you can link your business Facebook page to your Google listing um, instead of having a website or both. Um, mm -hmm. but, but you really do need to have both. Yeah. And so when you post on Facebook, you can simply use the same graphic and the same content for a Google post. So you would have to, basically duplicate your effort in, in um, building out that post on your Google listing. It's not really transferable, um, but you can use the same content. You just have to upload it into the Google listing. Cool, good. Um, so Dustin, hey Dustin, how's it going? Um, wants to know if uh, when he gets a website going and he needs help uh, understanding the difference between the different hostings. Mm -hmm. You can help with that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, specifically web hosting versus WordPress hosting. Well, if you're going to build a Word WordPress site, you definitely want to be with a hosting company that is, is um, on top of hosting WordPress sites because there's updates that come all the time. Mm -hmm. And those are, uh, for security purposes, uh, WordPress is an open source um, development uh, uh, develop website developer uh, platform that's um, very being open source is vulnerable for um, hacking. And so there's constant security updates with different themes in what WordPress. And so it's really important that you're using a hosting company that's going to manage those updates for you on a regular basis, keep you protected. Okay, thank you. I have a couple of questions in reference to, I have a couple of questions in reference to the um, Google reviews. One question is, can you actually delete a bad review? <laughs> so, so yes and no. Um, if, the review does not follow the guidelines for Google review uh, reviews. In other words, if it's inappropriate, if it's for the wrong business, if it's um, incorrect, if it's malicious, um, there's a whole list of those. And uh, then yes, uh, you can uh, bring it to Google's attention and request for it to be taken down. Um, you may not have much luck as an individual, but when you have the power of a premier level Google partner behind you, um, <laughs> we, we've had some success with situations that were obviously in violation of the Google policies for reviews. But if it's a situation where you <clears throat> screwed up and someone called you on the carpet, uh, no, you, you just have to own it and the goal then is to just get more good reviews to shove that one down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, did, um, Carrie, do you have a few tips to offer someone about how to get customers to write a review for them? Do you have just a few? Yeah, the easiest, again, <clears throat> in the Google dashboard, it will have that um, pop-up that says, share your Google listing and utilize that link that you can send out in an email to your customer base and ask for feedback and having that link directly to your Google listing for people to leave the review, super easy. Um, you can also use that link on your tagline on your uh, business emails, you know, uh, leave us a Google review, click here type of thing. Um, 
Uh, and you can also put that on your web page. So 70% of people will leave you a review if you ask them to and you make it super easy for them to do that. Okay, thank Good. you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, so Maria wants to know how you link Facebook to Google posts. Yeah. So first of all, it has to be a business Facebook page. There's a difference between a personal Facebook page and a business Facebook page. And so, um, oh, to a post. Okay. So on your Google posts on that call to action button, if you want to make it a learn more, it'll let you put a link in and you could just link to your Facebook page. Uh, but ideally, on your Google listing, um, if you've properly built out your business Facebook page, it will link to your Google listing. Um, and where it has at the bottom of your um, Google listing, it'll say like, it'll have the uh, Facebook uh, logo and people can click that and go directly to your business Facebook page. Cool. Okay. Any other questions, Tony? No, but we've got... Lots of great um, comments for Carrie. Yeah. Fantastic oh, presentation, um, wonderful info. Um, so thank you for a wonderful, another wonderful presentation, Carrie. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. It was great thank to be you with very you much, all. Carrie. I'm glad you could come back. Um, this is very important. Um, if you want more information, please reach out to Carrie. Uh, she is the one of the best resources that we tap into all the time. So please uh, don't be shy. <laughs> She'd like to hear from you. Sure. Um, and um, so we'll um, we'll pick up again next week. Uh, we also have some information on our website at um, KSB ksbdc.org on some other Google sponsored um, webinars that we'll be hosting here later in the next couple of months. So please check those out. And um, I guess we'll just call it a day today. It's a big day today here in Louisville, so we'll uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody and thanks for um, thanks for attending today and and thank you, Carrie and Tony. Thank as you. Always. And thank you. Um, enjoy the good weather and we'll see you soon. See you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye bye.